So as I go through these tips, I'm going to be making slow cooked chicken tagine. So you'll be able to see how all this works in action. And I'll put the ingredients in the description below in case you want to have a go at it. Tip number one is to heat it up. So in the instant pot, we need to make sure that all of our ingredients are hot before we even get near touching that slow cook button. So in this recipe I'm doing now, I'm going to use that saute button to sear my chicken and also get my onions nice and brown, get it really hot before we hit slow cooking. Tip number two, you can use your normal instant pot lid to slow cook, but if you're doing this, you need to make sure that the lid is vented. But my tip is to actually use a glass lid for slow cooking. It doesn't have to be the official instant pot lid. As long as it's got a little vent hole there and it fits nice and snug, you can put that on and this will really help you keep an eye on things and you can quite happily lift the lid off, put it back on again during cooking. There's no pressure on this setting, nothing to be worried about. It's just like a normal slow cooker or a pan on the stove. Tip number three is to take into account this is not like a normal slow cooker, so we can't use exactly the same settings. So in a normal slow cooker, there's a heated element all the way around the outside, but in an instant pot, we have only got heat from underneath. There are no heat filaments around the outside of the bowl. And this is not a ceramic pot, it's stainless steel, so its heat conductivity is different. And you don't need to understand all of the detail of that at all. All you need to understand is that the Instant Pot doesn't cook as hot. So although there is a low setting, I treat it more as keep warm. So if your trusty slow cooker recipe says to cook on low, don't cook on low in the Instant Pot, cook on high. Tip number four is to get your timing right. So not only do you use a higher setting for your slow cook recipes, you also need to add a bit of time for most recipes. And I found a formula which was for every hour of slow cooking, add in an extra 15 minutes. So for example, in the recipe I'm cooking right now, the instructions for a slow cooker would be to cook it for four hours on high. But in this case, I'm going to add 15 minutes for every hour and that means I'm going to cook it for five hours on high. So in the research I did for this video I thought the best place that summed it up was in Better Homes and Gardens so I'm going to put a link to that article in the description below for you and I really recommend you have a look and if you're finding these tips useful and you could give me a thumbs up on this video that would be amazing. Thank you. So tip number five, this one has been the most confusing for me. Now, I don't have a long history of slow cooking, so it's not something I'm used to. I'm a pressure cooking girl. And I have found this display on the Instant Pot Pro, at least, completely confusing in terms of the preheat. Is it just me? So even though when we set this going, the timer starts counting down, the display might jump from preheat to cook, but then it goes back to preheat mode and it might stay in preheat mode, on mine at least, for about an hour, even coming up two hours before it hits cook. The best thing to do, or at least for my sanity, was to completely ignore that preheat display and just let it get on with it, set it at the right time, and then use my final tip to reassure yourself that your recipe are good to eat. And how do we do that? This is how. It's an instant read thermometer. So get yourself one of these and if your food isn't cooked just simply set it away again on high and test again in another hour. Okay so we're back from pickleball so let's serve this up and see if it's worked. Yeah, this is good. 
So this is cooked really well, it's delicious. So if you absolutely love slow cooking, I don't know if I would use the Instant Pot Pro to replace your slow cooker, but it can do it. And if you're happy to faff about a bit, work out how your recipes will work, expect it to take a little bit longer, and please use your Instant Read thermometer. So if you want to have a look for yourself about how pressure cooking works when we're cooking up chicken, take a look at the video that's on screen now, and I'll see you over there back with my pressure cooker.